Hey folks, we're here in beautiful Jemez Springs in the Jemez National Recreation Area in New Mexico, just north of Albuquerque. And I gotta tell you, this is yet another one of this Joe's amazing places to see if you're in New Mexico. A lot of red rock, red sand. Uh, there's a beautiful river, a couple beautiful rivers running through here. It's the Jemez River, I believe. And uh, we are camping here amongst the cottonwoods in full bloom. Just an amazing place. However, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Sedona, Arizona. Sedona is an amazingly beautiful location. It's stunningly beautiful. It's as yeah. beautiful as Utah, <laughs> the Grand Canyon, um, any place that has red rocks, uh, Sedona rivals this. Oh yeah, yeah. In addition to the beauty of Sedona, there's a lot to do there. So many camping and hiking opportunities, mountain hiking. biking, sightseeing opportunities, like every kind of tour. And how about the uh, new age activities? You'll find psychics, crystals, people reading auras. You can get your aura photographed. Yeah, you can. Also, of course, there's a lot of shopping and finally a lot of dining opportunities. And we're gonna talk about all of those things. We're gonna give you some tips and some suggestions of things to do, places to go and show you some of the things that we did. But first, I'd like to ask you to please consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, if nothing else, it helps to give us a little bit of incentive for continuing to do these videos. And please leave us a comment. Let us know if you liked the video, if you didn't like the video. We are answering every comment that somebody sends us. So, okay, enough with that. Let's dive into Sedona. So when you're in Sedona, you're going to need a place to stay. So let's talk a little bit about some of the camping and boondocking opportunities for you in Sedona. Uh, there are a couple official campgrounds in Oak Creek Canyon, which is between Sedona and Flagstaff. Uh, one is uh, Manzanita, but it is tent only. The other one that I know of is Cave Springs. When we were there, both of those campgrounds were full. They are probably always full. There is absolutely no boondocking in the canyon at Not all. Loud. They have signage. There's no camping outside of the official campgrounds. However, if you're coming from the north or you're heading out of Sedona and heading north, uh, there is at least one place that I know of in the Coconino National Forest between Flagstaff and Sedona. There are a couple of unofficial campgrounds up there that provide great boondocking opportunities. What we boondocked was the ever popular Forest Road 525 otherwise known as Loy Butte Road. Very popular destination, public land, BLM land. It is west of Sedona, just a few miles, so it's a pretty convenient place. But the road is dusty, it's rocky. It's washboard. It's all of the above. And you're gonna see a lot of OHV vehicles driving up and down that road. However, the views are incomparable. It's a great place to stay. I would never stay there on a weekend. I don't like staying anywhere on the weekend except maybe a Cracker Barrel. But we stayed in three different sites and they were just beautiful and the views were great. It was quiet while we were there, plenty of stars. Uh, but again, you are gonna deal with some traffic in OHV and pink Jeeps. I can also tell you that when you are done with Sedona, you will spend an entire day cleaning your van. And your dog. And your, dog your dog will be red rock dust. Everything in your van and on your dog and your personal clothing will be red from staying out on Lloyd Butte Road. The bad thing about our stay out there was unfortunately at night in a drunken stupor, I dropped and broke my stolen Zilker brewing glass. But we won't talk anymore about that. So, okay, let's start with West Sedona because that's how we arrived. We came in from the West. Traffic, that's the very first thing that you notice after the beautiful red rock and the location, right? If you're a van lifer, if you're a traveler, an RVer, etc., this is the part of Sedona where you're going to stock up on supplies. So we have Bashas, Whole Foods, natural grocers. West Sedona is not very walkable. However, there is a sidewalk that runs along the length of the street, so it's not like you can't walk. One thing that's really cool though is the landscaping. It's, it's beautiful. Even Walmart and Whole Foods are all hidden behind the landscaping. You don't see any signage. And so I really got to hand it to Sedona for doing 
for doing that and making West Sedona more beautiful. Why don't we talk about Uptown, what that's like? Uptown, it's very touristy. And uh, again, traffic. There are a lot of shops, a lot of clothing stores, fudge stores, gelato stores, oh, yeah. candy this is, stores. This is where you're going to go to get your kachinas, take back to your grandkids. Um, you're going to get that in Uptown. You know, it's worth a stroll through there. Uh, they have nice sidewalks. Sidewalk cafes. You know, shops, and you're going to see every kind of tour. This is the part of town where you're going to go and sign up for those helicopter tours. But the most ubiquitous thing that you will see is the pink Jeep. Oh, pink Jeeps everywhere. <laughs> pink Jeep the pink tours. Jeep tour. They're out in the desert. They're on the uh, forest roads. They're in town. They're everywhere. And uh, so when I think of Sedona in the future, I'll always be thinking about the uh, pink Jeeps. South of Uptown, you're going to hit what I keep calling downtown. Uh, and that's where Tulake Paki Village is. It's commercial shopping development. And it's done in the old Mexican style. But wow, is it well done. It is absolutely beautiful. There are fountains. There are gardens there. There are beautiful sycamore trees and music. Statues, and a lot of statues. A lot of high-end shops, jewelry stores. Art galleries. We didn't go into any of those. I was just stunned, again, I use that word. I was just stunned by the amazing beauty of the gardens and the flowers and the sycamores there. And I think it's worth reading a little passage here while I show some footage uh, from the Talake Pocket website, which is tlaq.com, uh, to give you a little bit of a history of this place. Really interesting. So back in the 1970s, just south of Highway 89A at the bridge crossing over Oak Creek, there was a nursery that was home to a distinctive sycamore grove on several acres of land owned by Harry and Ruby Gerard. Abe Miller, a successful Nevada businessman and real estate developer, had a vision of building an arts village reflecting the charm and mood of old Mexico. After two years of quiet persuasion, he acquired the property from the Gerards with the assurance that the beloved sycamores would remain untouched and healthy. And so they remain. And it was really cool what they did with the sycamores. I mean, this is, you know, 50 years ago now that they built this place. And they built the buildings around the existing sycamores. There are sycamores resting on the tops of, of buildings, coming through walls. So I would say if you're going to visit Tulake Pocket Village, you should jump onto their website and read more of the history because it really is fascinating. It talks about where they got the design, the artisans that they used, and just so impressive. Okay, enough of Talake Pocket Village. Village. We're going to head south on Route 179, just a few miles to part of town called Chapel. And Route 179 south from Sedona to the village of Oak Creek is known as the Red Rock Scenic Byway. It's gorgeous. And this is where you're going to find the Chapel of the Holy Cross. The Chapel of the Holy Cross is a really beautiful piece of architecture that's built right into the mountains and it's inspired and commissioned by local rancher and sculptor, Marguerite Brunswick Stoud. My sister's name is Marguerite. <laughs> it's designed by August K. Stroltz of the firm Ashen and Allen, and it was completed in 1956 at a cost of $300,000. And as you approach it, walking up to it, the first thing that you're going to see is this undulating pathway that leads up to a beautiful veranda overlooking the valley and overlooking a lot of the other parts of Sedona. You can see Chicken Point, the Sisters, Courthouse Butte, Bell Rock, Cathedral Rock, and there is the chapel at the end of this verana. Wow, just, do I, I have to use the word stunning again because I need, I need that thesaurus. Yeah, I we really, have, we've, <laughs> we I have to get that. on Amazon and buy that we thesaurus. Really do. But the chapel's small. Yeah, it's not a cathedral, it's a chapel. It's small. It is a modern art masterpiece. It's beautiful. Uh, and it is a very busy place. Uh, I have a feeling it probably wasn't busy when we were there, although it felt like it was. I can't even imagine going on the weekend. If you're there on a weekend, you might want to just avoid it. Another place that we visited is in West Sedona. Really cool place called the Amitabha Stupa 
and Peace Park. It's at the base of Thunder Mountain in West Sedona, and it's free, and it's right in the middle of a residential area. So it's a valuable real estate, and then you have this beautiful, I guess it's like a temple. And what a stupa is, they're beacons of compassion, and they broadcast the power of prayer. So they have a huge stupka there. It's 36 feet high. It's named after Amitabha, the Buddha of infinite light who purifies the delusion and suffering of attachment. It's perfect for van life. Purifying the delusion and suffering of attachment. And by the way, uh, we were just in Albuquerque for the second time to move our storage unit. Talk about attachment. Okay, we won't talk about that. This Shakyamuni Buddha from Bali was carved from a single piece of mahogany in the 80s, and it was donated to this park in 2006. Yeah, the whole place is really peaceful, and I really like this kind of motto that I found on this bench near the Shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamama. Start over. And I really enjoyed reading this motto for life on this park bench there. I would recommend it to anybody looking for a little bit of solitude during their trip. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the thing that we went to Sedona to do, and that is hiking. Wow, talk about hiking heaven. It's hiking everywhere. Hiking everywhere you go, everywhere. they're hiking. So all trails list 500 different hikes in the Sedona area, 500. And uh, we can't talk about all 500. We can't even talk about the top 10, but we can talk about the ones that we did we can uh, give you some tips on those hikes, show you where to go. And so we're gonna dive into that in a moment. All of the hikes that we did are in the Red Rock Secret Wilderness of the Coconino National Forest. It's amazing that this place is not a national park or a national monument. It should be because it's as beautiful as any of the national parks that we have been to. But the good thing about the fact that it isn't is that dogs are allowed on pretty much all the trails as far as I know. I don't know all They're of them. They're pretty dog but, friendly. But yeah, it's really dog friendly, which national parks usually are not. No. So that's a pretty great thing. There's paved parking, excellent signage, and restrooms at all the trailheads that we visited. And so to park at any of the trailheads, you're gonna need either a Red Rock Pass or a National Interagency Pass. But a Red Rock Pass is pretty easy to get. It's available, I think, at almost all of the parking lot trailheads. There's a vending machine there. It's $5 a day, $15 a week, or $20 for an annual Red Rock Pass. And buy the pass, because they do patrol. And if you don't have the pass, you're gonna be, get, you're gonna be hit with a serious fine. Yep, you're gonna be hit with a fine. So bite the bullet and spend the five bucks on the pass, please. And it's best to hit all of these trails early in the morning. I don't know what it's like in the winter time, but we were there in early May and uh, it gets hot really quickly there in the desert. So get out as early as possible to beat the heat and beat the crowds. And as always when hiking in the desert, bring plenty of water. Plenty of water, especially if you have a dog. And so now let's talk about some of the trails. We're gonna talk about the trails that we did and we're gonna start from the easiest and progress towards the most difficult. I would say the easiest trail that we did was called the Bell Rock Path. Uh, all trails calls it moderately challenging. We only went to Bell Rock, we didn't do Courthouse Butte, so I don't know what was challenging about it. Maybe it's just the heat because it was way too hot for us to even finish because we did it after another trail that we'll talk about shortly called the Devil's Bridge Trail. We did them both the same day. It was way too hot for Charlie. He just kept pulling us off trail to try to find shade and lay in the shade. So uh, we kind of abandoned halfway through there. Another very easy trail is called the Fay Canyon Trail. Why don't you tell us about the Fay Canyon Trail? It's very easy, it's a short hike, it's one mile each way, so that's two miles round trip, and it's a good starter trail. So it's sandy, and it's shady, it's pine and oak forest, so you do get a little bit of shade. You have views of red rock canyon walls, but when you get to the end, you have to do a lot of scrambling, but you're rewarded with really nice views. And you actually don't have to do the scrambling if you don't want to, you get to the end of this really easy, sandy, shady trail. And there's a sign there that says end of trail, something like that. Uh, I did scramble up the rocks a little bit so that I could turn around and get the views back down the canyon. And of 
course, all the trails provide you with amazing views. That's what you're there for. Let's talk about the next trail that we did, which was Doe Mountain. Doe Mountain is very close to Fay Canyon and we might have abandoned the idea of hiking Doe Mountain because we saw that it was a fairly easy trail. But someone said to us, do not discount Doe Mountain, you have to do it. All trails lists Doe Mountain as the number 18 trail. I think it should be higher on the list. Of all the trails that we did, it was one of my favorites for the views that we saw. And it's longer than 1.5 miles. I'd say it's 1.5 each way. It's probably- Because you're gonna wanna walk around up there. Yeah, I think so too. It has an elevation gain of 511 feet. It starts out pretty easy, sandy, have to step over a few rocks, but then it climbs pretty quickly because yeah. again, it rises 511 feet in, in about a mile. On the way up that trail, what did we see? A snake. There's a snake over here. Yeah, a rattle. Right around the sledge, Charlie put his nose into a crevice, and then I heard rattle, rattle, rattle. It was a Mojave green rattlesnake. So Charlie and I were walking ahead, and Charlie is looking into this rock, and then I hear the rattle. I hear the rattle. I'm so I pull back Charlie, and Charlie did get a snake. Snake proof class when he was. <laughs> snake awareness class. Snake awareness class in his um, dog training class. Yeah, in his dog training, they taught him to avoid snakes. I think he learned to avoid a broom. Yeah, they kept pushing a snake around with a broom towards Charlie, and they would just yell at him and, you know, snake, and he'd run away. But, but I don't anyway. know, maybe it worked because he alighted on, this, on the rattlesnake, and Nita said that she heard it. Yeah, he smelled it first. He definitely smelled it before we saw or heard it. Again, I think this trail had some of the best views at all. It's like kind of like a Mesa or Butte, completely flat on top and high chaparral, but you walk to the other side and that's where you're gonna see the views. You're gonna see uh, the Boynton Canyon Trail from up there. You're gonna see Chimney Rock. You, I think you can see Cathedral Rock. You can see pretty much the whole Sedona Valley from up on Doe Mountain. It's beautiful. Highly recommended. Definitely take Doe Mountain. Doesn't take that long couple quick hours and you'll be re rewarded with amazing views. And watch out for snakes. The next trail on our list is Boynton Canyon Trail, which is supposed to be spectacular. Six mile out and back. Let's check it out. So this trail was also one of our favorite trails. So favorite. on all, all trails, it is ranked as the number three most popular trail in Sedona. And it's a moderate 6.1 out and back. It has an elevation gain of 826 feet. So this trail has a lot of shade, has nice places to sit and rest and drink water, and also to let your dog rest and drink water. Charlie really liked it. Yeah, Charlie really liked laying in the shade and drinking water there. However, if you're doing Boynton Canyon Trail, Odds are that the real reason you're doing it is because you're headed to the Subway Cave. If you don't know what the Subway Cave is, whoa, stay tuned, because we're gonna tell you all about it. We didn't know anything about it until we ran into this couple right at the beginning of the trail who asked us, are you guys going up to the Subway Cave? And we were like, um, I Maybe. guess so, I don't know. And they said, yeah, um, it's not marked. And so the way you find it is you're gonna find like the biggest alligator juniper you've ever seen. And when you see that, you're gonna make a right and that's gonna take you up to the trail. And we were like, okay, we'll do that. Well, believe me, there are a lot of alligator junipers along that trail, so we were a little bit confused. But we ran into someone else and we asked them, hey, how far up is the Subway Cave Trail? And she said, oh, it's not too far up there. If you're on a trail and you ask somebody how far something is, they will always say, it's not far. <laughs> Whether it's a mile or the six miles, it's not far. Yeah, it's maybe a quarter mile, but it's probably six. Yeah. And she pulled out her phone and said, here, look, here's a picture of the tree. This is what the tree looks like. Another tip is when you get to this tree, on the right hand side, you're gonna see another trail that goes to the right and goes up a hill there. That trail has a log that is across it. That's how you find it, by jumping over that log and taking that trail up. So when you get up to the cave, the first thing you're gonna see amongst the rock is the cave itself and people climbing up in there. 
And there is a way to go right up through the center. There's a place where the cave floor has collapsed and fallen out and you can scramble up that. That's what I did. That's what I saw other people doing. However, there's a much easier route. If you stick to your left and you, you'll see like a rock fall there and you can scramble up that rock fall. That's obviously the much safer and much easier route. That's the way Nita went up there as well. I like to be safe. Let me just tell you, it's very dangerous. It's a cliff edge and you're going to be walking along the edge of the cliff the whole way. Uh, I did it because I love heights and I'm not really afraid of those kind of things. Did you walk the cliff edge? I walked the cliff edge, but I was probably about three feet away from the cliff edge. Yeah. That's how close I get. But you didn't go into Subway Cave, did you? Oh, no, no. I just viewed it from afar. Yeah, it was because still very beautiful. Because if you're coming from the the left side where you scramble up the rocks, you have to traverse a cliff edge that is probably only like, you know, a foot wide and goes around a bend. Enough of the talking. For the next minute or two, I'm just gonna let the camera roll. like the Subway Cave Trail. And the final trail that we did is Devil's Bridge. And according to all trails, this is the number one most popular trail in the Sedona area. You can get to Devil's Bridge via the road, or you can get there via the trail. We decided to take the trail, and that's where we are now, on the Chuck Wagon Trail on our way to Devil's Bridge. And since we are on the Chuck Wagon Trail, Charlie's name for today it's chuck wagon. Come on, chuck wagon. It has an elevation gain of 521 feet. All Trail says it's a 3.9 mile out and back trail. We did not find that to be the case. Our health app on our iPhone said we did something like 6.3 miles. Mm -hmm. Whether you take the road or whether you take the chuck wagon trail, they come out at the same place. And this is the point where the chuck wagon trail comes out onto the road and heads up the final portion of the trail. And from there, I think it's the signage said it was 0.7 miles to Devil's Bridge. It's not far. And it goes uphill very, very quickly. That 521 feet elevation gain is probably just that last 0.7 miles. All Trails calls it moderately challenging. I would call it challenging to moderately difficult at the end at the end and it's really only the last tenth of a mile that makes it like that and there's a lot of steps um, like rock steps to climb and eventually you get to a point where it's scrambling there are steps but you're using your hands and it's pretty steep and it was kind of cool because Right across from the bridge, there's kind of like almost a natural bleacher section where oh, yeah. there were a lot of people just sitting on those bleachers. And it's fun to just watch other people go out on the bridge. It's an arch. It's an arch. It's a, it's a natural stone arch bridge. It's very high. It's very, very dangerous. I did it. I didn't feel like it was dangerous because I used precaution. Did you go out on the bridge? I did not go out on the bridge. <laughs> I watched it. Nita's not afraid of heights. She's afraid of falling from those heights. He thinks it's the same thing. It's not because I could be as high as ever. I'm just afraid of slipping and falling. I'm not a risk taker. 
kids are really jumping cool. up and down. You know, I, I surprised one girl almost did a cartwheel. I'm like, don't do that. Oh my goodness. Not only do you take turns walking on the bridge, but you're going to take turns in that final scramble up to the bridge. You're going to take turns with people coming down as well. It's kind of like an elevator. Please let people get off of the elevator before you get on. Please let people come down that scramble section before you go up. Uh, I was coming down and people just kept trying to get up and you can't pass people on that scramble. We're so. society. You have to take your turn. We're not f***ing animals. We live in a society. Whew. Well, that was a lot harder than I expected it to be. That last portion going up to the bridge is really steep, but well worth the payoff, really awesome. Coming back on this road was not nearly as nice as taking the chuck wagon trail. The chuck wagon trail was really awesome. And the worst thing about the road was absolutely no shade and it's gotten hot now. But um, Devil's Bridge, you gotta do it, well worth it. A couple other trails that we would suggest doing because they came recommended to us. We did the number one trail, which was Devil's Bridge. We did the number three trail, which was, I believe, Boynton Canyon. Uh, we did not do the number two trail, which is Cathedral Rock. And the reason we didn't is because All Trails calls it hard. And apparently people say there is a lot of hand over rock scrambling. But it's, it's also described as being really, really slippery rock. The problem is that we have Charlie and we can't, we just can't do that kind of trail. We can't leave him in the van either. Soldiers Pass, which can also include the Seven Sacred Pools Trail. And the final trail that we'll have to hit next time is the Birthing Cave or the Birthing Cave. Our friend Katrina is a midwife and so I'm sure she would like that one. <laughs> do you know anything about the Birthing Cave? I do, but Katrina would like that. Yeah, I think people bury their placenta there or something. So bring the <laughs> shovel. So that's Sedona and the Sedona area in one great big nutshell. Sedona is a must see. Yep, yeah, go there. Yeah, you gotta go to Sedona. Anything else you'd like to say? I just like to recommend Arizona. Arizona is a fantastic state. There's so much to do, so much to see. It's a beautiful state. And finally, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, we'd really appreciate it. It encourages us and uh, we'll see you on the road. See you on the road.